for the most part, having a company which basically is uh, in Malaysia, there are different types of methods of registration of companies. So, for example, a sole proprietorship is easier to register, and it doesn't have uh, that many um, overheads and requirements. Whereas the company that I registered is a private limited company. And private limited companies require more stringent management in terms of the finances. There needs to be declaration of the income to the income tax department that's done annually. You need to have a company secretary and so on and so forth. So it's really very much more convoluted. However, the reality was that I knew that at some point I would also want to be asking for donations or looking for sponsorships and so on. And all these people would need legitimate companies that have a good record of their finances in order to convince them that they would want to invest some money in a production or so on. So I think the primary reason that I started this company was because I felt that after three to six years of training for a lot of the students that I was working with at that time at Aswara, which was the National Academy for Arts, Culture and Heritage, so many years was spent. And this kind of training wasn't really available in Malaysia at that time. Under one roof, you could study contemporary dance, ballet, Chinese dance, Bharatanatyam, Malay dance, improvisation, composition, uh, lighting, sound management, stage management, and so on. But what was important for me was the answer to these questions that I was asking, which is, where and what do these students and these graduates do upon graduation? What opportunities exist for them that we can actually push the art forward a little bit more? One important fact was while we were in Aswara, we were producing work under the college banner that was already, you know, making waves in the Malaysian dance industry. I mean, the productions that we were doing, such as Gelombang Baru for young choreographers, Jamu for the teachers' choreographies, tapestry for traditional work. These were already getting noticed for example, by Kakisani Bo Cameronian Arts Awards. From the first moment they launched Bo until this year, we've always been winning awards under some banner or other as a school production. And despite the fact that it was a school production. So what saddened me was I felt that a lot of the graduates were ending up after graduation working at the National Theatre or the Department for Arts and Culture, government companies, which is the bulk of the opportunities for work for dancers or musicians who don't want to work freelance. And this was sad for me because I think after six years of training or three to six years, depending on whether they did the diploma or the degree, what was very frustrating was you end up being in service of the needs of the ministry or the minister or tourism which, you know, you wear beautiful costumes and you look very nice and you take good photographs and you try to encourage people to come and visit Malaysia, truly Asia, and eight steps to the right, eight steps to the left, circle forward, circle backwards, and so on and so forth. But after all that painful dance training, I really wanted the dancers to do more. And I felt that there was a group of dancers who did want to do more. Now, mind you, not everybody actually does want to do more. And I don't want to judge whether it's good for them or, or anything. But I did feel that there was a need for dancers to have a space to continue to push themselves even further. 